Hello guys, today I'm gonna be showing you the loadouts we're bringing in in the Dungeon World First Race. So I'm gonna start over from my Titan loadouts and I'm gonna go slightly more in-depth uh, now, simply because, I mean, I'm the one like mainly making the video, so if I need to mention some specific things, I'll probably mention them here. Otherwise, I might have an extra section at the end, not sure. Anyways, let's go over the loadouts. Uh, first of all, we're going in 1-1-1, one, 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 so one Titan, one Hunter, one Warlock. This gives you Well of Radiance, gives you... Uh, a titan for head clear and it also gives you um, the ability to have an hunter in case you need like a night talk since it's the best super in the game for like burst damage so yeah uh, now that said first of all i have a loadout where i fly in with uh, i have eager edge of course uh, sunshot and the call i like to use slice and desperate measure on the call the reason is slice is just very good and desperate measure is always up if you use a melee build so Three damage. Uh, Sintos, of course, Mini Ember. That's like my classic go to build with Sol Invictus, Roaring Flames, Empyrean, Solace, Searches, Ashes. Those are the mods. I will mention now make sure to have an heavy finder on every loadout, even on the damage ones, so that when you swap to a damage loadout, you don't uh, lose uh, the amount of kills you like stored, so to say. So if you're close to a brick, you don't like lose that progress. Triple Heavy Ended, that's mandatory. Uh, resist will change. Uh, depending on the encounter. I do like running double concussive, but I can I can change that for sure. This doesn't really matter as long as you have uh, recuperation, of course, uh, and yeah. Powerful attraction is mandatory, and I guess proximity ward is always very good. Then uh, uh, let's see. Oh, so in this loadout here, I am ready to just do this in case jumping puzzles are hard and I need to skate, but I like to stay on Sintos if I if I can, obviously I will change my jump to catapult in case, but yeah, that's a couple of clicks. I didn't bother making a loadout for it because I don't have infinite slots. And don't flame my 114 resilience, but that's the lowest I can get it. Uh, then, let's see. So this one is a uh, uh, encounter loadout uh, for Whisper. Now, I don't even know if I will start the encounter on Whisper. I still have to decide. I could start on Xeno, I could start on Tractor, I could start on the GL. I have to figure that out, I might like change it uh, on the fly. I made all my loadouts on Whisper or Tractor so far because I do feel like those are the most likely things to, to happen. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, the mods are like fairly similar. I guess in on those like encounter, like boss encounter running loadouts, I do have uh, bot finders and scouts uh, because I want to make ammo for my teammates if I can. I have hands on to charge my super since when you cast this super, you can't die. It doesn't matter like what's hitting you, so it's just a very good panic button. Um, triple uh, heavy ended, of course, as always. Yeah, scabs, resists. Everything here is the same. Whisper is very good right now, so like I feel like if it's a boss that has a fairly long damage phase and you can use Whisper, you probably should, because that will mean you will never run out of ammo, pretty much. Uh, that's the damage loadout. I have a loader and a dexterity. Mm, I have radiant light. It's nice to have... Uh, on damage loadouts, just to make sure you always have like stacks. Yeah, time dilation, powerful attraction, solar surge, pretty classic. On bonk, I like to run ignition code, I should mention, uh, because when you get close to targets, uh, to bonk them, like if they aren't blind under contest, they might uh, kill you. Now, I know you can't blind some bosses, I know you can't blind champs, but there often aren't many of those. If there are, then this might not be a bonk angle. Uh, despite the healing nade being very good, it doesn't save you from like an unstoppable champ, right? Uh, and yeah, that's the uncannon. Incandescent helps with sunspots. Also, don't worry about my inventory, I have plenty of like random stuff in here, I will probably clean this up. Uh, okay, so then I have a prismatic one. I'm not even sure if I'm gonna start boss encounters on like prismatic or solar. I am leaning towards solar for transitions. Uh, and uh, oh, I also have a solar one with tractor. I should mention the reason is uh, even if I start an encounter on whisper and I'm like, okay, this boss isn't like very good for whisper, I can just swap on the fly. Like, it doesn't matter if I already on whisper and then click on like tractor. I have like what seven shots that's fine for a damage phase and then i get more ammo so the reason why i can afford to start on whisper more than other people is because i actually just don't need ammo compared to like other classes right and there is an argument to be made that other classes don't need the uh, ammo either if they swap to a sword because of a relentless strike but it's it's a bit more sketchy like with tractor you will for sure not run out of ammo and then a dps with this fusion 
overflow control bars, triple strength surge. And yeah, I have my super. That's not bad if I have roaring flames and synthos. I could use paragels, but I hate it. It's super inconsistent. You're literally playing the lottery whether you are eating the boss or not and doing damage. So I'll probably not do that since I'd rather be on a good super for actually doing the mechanics. Um, so those are the prismatic loadouts. They are the same as the solar ones pretty much. I don't think there are any differences. So yeah, I'm, I mean mod wise, I can show the fragments, I guess. Knockout Consecration, of course, uh, Protection, Dawn, Ruin, Courage, Purpose. I feel like those four here are mandatory. I'm not sure on Dawn. I feel like like this one is the best fragment in the game, I think, Solitude. The thing is, I don't know if I'll need it since someone else might be running it or... I don't know. It's like it's very good on a boss, right? Especially when you're playing solo because then you hit the boss with your like primary or like sniper or anything and the boss does less damage, 40% less. The thing though is... I can melee a boss with Frenzy Blade and sever it. Obama can throw uh, his like, strand under melee and sever. So like, I feel like it might be overkill. I might swap to it, I'm not sure yet. But it's nice to also like, have a Radiant up all the time, right? So yeah. I think I'm, I will be going in like this, then I might uh, change to Solitude if I feel like I'm playing more range and using my Cannon more. I have to make the call on the fly. Uh, damage loadout, again, same. I also have like... Here, since uh, I'm running Thunder Crush right now, I don't know if I actually will, because Thunder Crush is apparently doing like absurd damage more than uh, full stack Star Eater's Nova Bomb. So if I can use it, I should. The thing is, uh, the thing is, when you run Thunder Crush, the strongest fragment you have, like Force of Reliability, which is Purpose, doesn't like really work, right? Because getting Amplified on Orbs is useless. So I would really rather like, I'm not gonna run something as safe as, like, Blade Fury because, yeah, sure, I get woven, but that's not worth losing a super, right? So, uh, I'm thinking of, like, running Void, uh, a Void super, if I feel like I'm struggling with surviving. In that way, I will get Overshield when I grab an orb, and that way I probably won't die because they buff the Overshields uh, quite a bit. Like, they almost have twice the effective HPs this season compared to last, so... Yeah, I will start the Thunder Crush, I think. I have to decide yet. I'll see how I feel. Uh... I can even just judge how hard the ads are eating during transitions. We don't even know if the dungeon is going to be minus 20 or minus 25. I think Salvation was minus 25. Uh, yeah. So I'll say. In case though I do use Thunder Crash, that's what this loadout is for. Uh, and I have a GL just to proc uh, we can clear. And uh, yeah, I mean, this one just has Curious. That's the difference, right? It's, still, it's a damage loadout equivalent to like this one, but I have Curious on, so I can Thunder Crash. Hmm. Apparently Curious Thunder Crush is doing like 43% more damage than last season, despite Bungie saying it was gonna do the same, that's why it's so good. And that's another loadout with Curious and uh, I have Tractor Fusion, so yeah, again, in case uh, I don't want to use Whisper and I'm like, I'll swap to Tractor, I can do that without even needing a wipe because I won't really need that rally. I made two strand loadouts, those are the, you know, the classic grapple melee BS, which I probably want to use. Uh, I feel like this one doesn't have any value because I probably won't like, use this. This one might have value simply because it could be a tractor loadout while being on strand. And the reason for this is if I cast my super, I give woven to everyone in case surviving is hard, but very niche scenario, which I don't think will happen. And I probably shouldn't even be on warm gods in this case. But yeah, those two loadouts, I didn't really think about that that much. Those are just classic strand loadouts. I've also heard that one two punch dispatches uh, 2x against bosses instead of 2.5 for some bug so it's it's just not practical i'm not gonna dps with this yeah very very niche i kept them here because i had some slots but yeah uh, this one is like the same loadout as this one i think difference is uh, i don't have curious but i have uh, the synth oil class item i guess i should have mentioned that that's the class item i'll be running i think it's the best i also have assassin synthos but probably don't need that in this uh, it's kind of sketchy to like you know you lose invis very easily by spamming consecration, so it's good, but I feel like I prefer the uh, the oil region. And yeah, again, those, one, those ones are the same loadouts, just Sintos. In a damage phase, I can easily like start on like Tractor, and I mean, if I see that it's a Tractor angle, I will swap this loadout, which is my neutral one, to Void Scavs and Tractor, of course. Then I'll have the Tractor one with Curious to T-Crush, and after I T-Crush, I can easily just swap to this, and then... 
I can keep tractoring and using the fusion, but I can also do a consecration or two if I see that I'm surrounded uh, to just chunk with some ignitions. So yeah, that's just to have like versatility on what I can do during a damage phase on tractor, but I might change the weapons on it and like mess around with it. Uh, last thing I'll mention is uh, the GL, right? This one is the new like hot weapon of the season with Envious, uh, Arsenal and Bait and Switch. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get the God Roll, so I don't have eight in the mag, but oh well. Uh, the rotation with this that we were thinking is just Cloud Strike, a Primary and uh, GL. So the, the whole idea is you proc uh, Bait, dump the GL, shoot Cloud Strike three times, shoot your Primary, dump the GL, Shoot Cloud Strike three times, shoot your primary, dump the GL. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. After two mags, uh, your second uh, Envious Arsenal block will reproc bait, and then you will dump the third GL mag. And the Cloud Strike in between is just nice, you know? It's arc, so you like match surges. I haven't made any loadouts with the GL because I'm the least likely to use it due to Titan being very good on Tractor and uh, also not having the God Roll, but. Again, if I feel like I want to use the GL, I'll change Whisper, I'll change my Scavs, I'll change my Surges, and I'll be ready. Uh, worth mentioning, a reason why Hunters are running Duskfield is also for this mod. Conductive Cosmic Crystal, it's more damage to slow targets with Arc uh, Void abilities and uh, weapons with the Dark Eater Reaper Origin trait. So, obviously Arc abilities is either T-Crash or the Twilight Arsenal if I decide to use that, and then the GL does have the trait, so it benefits. This is 8% damage buff, or 10% if you have the Tonic. And then if you grind it enough to unlock another artifact mod, you might as well unlock uh, Brain Freeds. It's more damage to frozen targets. Now, you're not really gonna be hitting frozen targets often, but if you do, it's free damage. It's probably not much, and I'm not sure about the numbers, but those are probably the two mods you run. Uh, I haven't really looked too much into artifact mods, so I don't think I want to go in depth uh, into them on this video, but those that I have on are probably like fine. I'm probably not even making use of many of those, but yeah. Uh, I think uh, I think that is fine. This should cover pretty much everything. Again, if I need to like add something, I'll add it at the end of the video, but I doubt it. And now my teammates are going to go over their uh, Warlock and Hunter builds. All right, these are just going to be a, it's just going to be a quick run through of my loadouts that I'm going to be taking into the dungeon tomorrow. Um, this will be the loadout that I'll be primarily flying in on. Um, the most important part to me is just the, the eager edge sword, um, just to zoom through, you know, intros and like transitions and stuff. Um, I'm going to be using double special for this part. It's going to be using the liturgy grenade launcher with blinding slide with chill clip. Um, and then mainly the uh, Baron action. I'm also going to be utilizing the speaker side helmet um, just to keep spamming nades um, and just keep the resto up for, for myself and the team. Um, for the subclass, it's mainly going to be solar. This is going to be well of radiance with Icarus Dash, Touch of Flame, and these are the fragments that I'll be using. We should mention that the reason why you run Nikaros Dash and not Helios is because I am running Consecrations and we don't want to mess with the multiplier, I guess, that is very in true. general. Yeah, don't want to mess with the multiplier, so I'm being the bigger man, and I took off Hellion, and I put on Icarus Dash. For the mods um, you want, but yeah. That's... Yeah, so just to run through of the mods real quick, just going to be running, you know, Solar Siphon stuff with Heavy Finders and Scouts. Um, going to be... Using those mods, Arc Void for the the Scorn enemies, and then the Scav is Arc. Don't flame me, but this doesn't matter to me right now because this is mainly just the transition loadouts. And then well, for I think the... your uh, your loader is also wrong. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. For the solar loader, of course. But yeah, okay. We're gonna change. Those that. are very very small changes that I can make uh, on the flying stuff. And then on my class item, I'm just gonna have special penny. Uh, prox ward for the overshield and then powerful attraction just to just to get orbs a lot um so i have my loadouts all kind of divvied up by color this is going to be our loadout if we go in with gls um i might switch off of this if i feel like i need to use like a hand cannon or some other primary um but this is just to try and print heavy bricks um 
a Baron action, and then the new Bittersweet Jail with Envious Arsenal and Bait and Switch. And then the, I would say the mods are relatively the same as those. Just make sure you change the scavengers to match, you know, the stuff that you're going for. And this is just going to be the damage of that loadout. Um, the damage we're going to be utilizing, the Bittersweet GL, and then I swapped from the Sidearm to a Cloud Strike. Um, the Cloud Strike is just going to be as just a proc Envious Arsenal and Bait and Switch, and then also just to match the 3x Arc Surges. Um, on the damage loadout too, I have the Skibbity Alchemy, where the Well is going to give me, it's going to be able to mark like targets that I damage and just give us like a little bit boost of damage. Um, and then everything here is just DPS loadout mods that should just help with quality of life stuff. Important stuff being like time dilations too, so your arc sur your surges don't you know run out as quickly. Um, the next one's going to be a similar running loadout, all utilizing speaker's mask, but this one's going to be in the case where we run in with whisper. Um, everything essentially remains the same here, just kind of swapping the the you know affinity related mods to match the stuff that i'm going to be using mostly um and then i have a sanguine alchemy uh loadout for the well as well with solar surges um and then i swap from a swap from a sidearm to a fusion just on the off chance that for some reason i don't we don't have like whisper ammo and then i just need to dump fusion so that's just the backup plan i mentioned that Sanguine Alchemy is very good, but we might also run Speaker's Mask on damage. We're not sure yet. Mm -hmm. This is going to be the case where we need to use swords. Um, this is just the important part, like Relentless Bait or you know any other good. There's so many good rules now with, with swords and damage and stuff. And just make sure, you know, the same thing, your scabs and stuff are swapped to... Like I, I always just like swapping it to like the heavy and stuff because that's the most important for like damage. And then I have again an associated sanguine alchemy loadout with the swords, and I'm also on Ergo Sum duty to give wolf pack rounds to myself and my fire team. These two green loadouts are gonna be my Cenotaph loadouts. Um I have one on the case where we have GL and I need to be on arc, so I just have div for that. And then I have one where we're on solar and I have the retraced path. Um, those are just going to be for, you know, obviously, Cenotaph duties. This down here is going to be my one Starfire loadout. It's just with Whisper and stuff like that. Uh, every mod is essentially, like, all my mods on all my classes are essentially the same, um, depending on if they're, like, running or damage. It's just minor things here and there. And then... These pink ones over here are going to be uh, pretty similar into these three classes, but the the key difference here is that I'm just using Song of Flame uh, on the chance that we don't need to use well, and Song of Flame is just better utility. So these are just going to be like Arc Song of Flame uh, with Bittersweet, and then the one below it is just going to be a Solar Song of Flame with Whisper, and then the last one is going to be a sanguine class with whisper and surges um i think that's pretty much it every all my fragments and stuff stay the same throughout each class aspects all that stuff um it's just the minor stuff here and there making sure like the affinity mods match um but yeah those are going to be the the loadouts that i fly in with all right so these are my hunter loadouts for the dungeon tomorrow so just to start this is the loadout i'm flying in on and it's a purely uh, transition mobility loadout. And it's going to consist of navigator, so I can make grapple points. Uh, a Baron action for some survivability and damage. Eager for mobility. And then I'm using stompies because it just helps speed up movement. And it gives a lot of DR. And I just want to get to encounters really quick. Um, I also have explosive finisher here. In case I need to get a grenade charge back really quick. For my prismatic subclass, I'm using threaded spike and a grapple nade. For my aspects, I'm using Stylus Executioner and Winter Shroud. And then these are my fragments. So when we uh, arrive at an encounter, if it's not a boss encounter, I am going to be going in with a Void Hunter, primarily revolving around Gerfalcons and Graviton Lance. And I'm going to be using the Call and the Pale Heart LMG to utilize the Origin trait to get a lot of super energy back. 
I'm going to be using Size Executioner and the Vanishing Step. And these are my fragments for Void. And these are my armor mods that I will be using. So outside of non-boss encounters, uh, when we get to a boss encounter, I'm going to be flying in with a neutral game of Lucky Pants, and I'll just be on Warden's Law, Baron Action again, and Bittersweet, which is the new uh, GL. And when we get to damage, I will be swapping to a Nighthawk loadout that swaps out some of the guns with Midnight Coup and the Cloud Strike for damage. Uh, these are the mods I'm going to be using. And then any all my fragments and aspects didn't change inside Prismatic. Uh, the only thing that changes is that I will be using a Dust Field Grenade instead of having a Grapple, because uh, it helps with survivability and charges up the Transcendence Bar. And then for this loadout, I will also have a Knucklehead uh, loadout for when the boss gets low, and we're bringing him down uh, for his later phases. So again, nothing's changing here, except it's Knucklehead. These three loadouts are basically one-to-ones of the GL loadouts, except it's with Whisper. So the mods do change based on the elemental versions of them. But again, the no aspects or fragment changes. And it's just Whisper for neutral game. Night Talk loadout is the same thing. And then I have a Knucklehead loadout with, again, just Whisper and changing mods to match the elemental. This loadout right here is a sword loadout in case we start a boss encounter with a Whisper, but we find out quickly that we won't be able to use it. So I'll be utilizing Nighthawk with 4th Horseman and Summon Bonum. And the reason I'm using Summon Bonum is because these two weapons match Surges, so I can double dip. And you can get your ammo out really quick with Hunter Dodges, and it's just really good damage all around. Outside of that, there is no more loadouts for me to show, and that's my game plan for tomorrow.